I used to study hard. I'd spend hours studying for a subject and I found pride in like my six hour study sessions and all nighters. And usually the study session would end in a mental breakdown. <laughs> This is the last thing I want for you. Don't study hard, study smart. Here's the exact study schedule and strategy I've used to study less but get better grades. I was really struggling in chemistry this year and I went from getting B minuses on my test to A's. This stuff works. <laughs> Seven days before your test date, you want to get wide instead of getting deep. I know it might sound like a little unachievable to start studying seven days before your test, but at least for me at my school, our largest tests, we usually get seven days, five to seven days, notice of when it's going to be so just think about it like you have an allotted time that you're gonna study anyway so it's much better to break up the pain than suffer it in the last three days before your test and you will perform better so getting wide before you get deep means overviewing and exposing yourself to all the units that are gonna be on your test a big problem that I used to struggle with on tests is I would always make mistakes on the problems that were from our later units so to fix this issue instead of figuring out about the first unit Unit, then getting super deep, then doing the second unit, you just want to expose yourself to an overview of all the units. And it'll also expose to you how all the units connect together, and that can be super helpful if you actually want to like learn the subject. So when you're reading through the entire textbook, I'm going to use my chemistry test as an example because that is currently my hardest class. Try not to reread a ton of times. Be okay with not getting it perfectly. And then do a few practice problems as you read. A textbook usually has practice problem sections, just as little checkpoints to make sure that you're comprehending the material, but don't stress about like getting a full grasp on it yet because the next few days are where we're going to unpack that more. Okay, five days out before the test is the fun part. This is your running part. Look at this as like you're running a 10 minute mile. You're running, but like you're not sprinting. After a few days of just exposing yourself to the topic, you wanna to start running these little mock tests. So these mock tests have about three to five practice problems within like one of the subunits of your test. If the subject isn't math or science, I'll also give you guys another way to do like mock trial tests. So let's use history class as an example. For my last history test, what I did is I wrote a full page summary on the war and whenever my mind would just blank about a date or a detail, I would just underline it, make a comment, and that was something I would go back into later to revise. So this is a really good way of actually actively retrieving something. I've read a lot of books on effective studying because I just, I like this stuff. It's called Make It Stick and it talks a ton about active retrieval techniques and this is one of them. This is so much better than rereading and then like taking notes on that. Like I rarely take notes guys. Like I do better on my tests because I take less notes and I used to really think that notes were like the holy grail. And you can also, if you don't want to do a written summary, film a three minute video for yourself talking about the war, like a three minute presentation. And whenever you just don't know what to say, that is a cue that you need to go back into your textbook reading and target that specific spot. So this is called inquiry-based learning, where you're actually focusing on your most weakest points, and that is actually just going to increase your score on the test, because a lot of those units that you are studying and rereading, you already have a baseline knowledge of, so it's much smarter to attack the problems where you are blanking on. Smarter, not harder. If you get any of your math or science questions wrong, go back to the textbook, reread, and then also do some simpler problems. When you do these mock tests, you want to find the hardest problems that you can find. So when I'm studying chemistry, what I do is I find like a really wordy word problem. I try to find one that has lots of numbers, has lots of words, because it's likely going to trip me up. But <laughs> because you started studying early, you have room to suffer. This is why I love studying ahead of time, because it gives you room to fail. Making mistakes is actually such a good way to learn, because then throughout the test and other mock trial tests, you are going to have this like red flag reader in your brain that's going to consciously see, oh, well, I can't make this mistake here. So when you're under stressful test conditions, you're likely not going to make that mistake and other students maybe will. So what do you do if you can't fill the gaps of knowledge independently? And there's no shame in this. I struggle with this sometimes and I have a tutor that is my go-to when I just really need help on something because sometimes rereading the textbook won't help if you genuinely don't understand the textbook's wording. So seek help as soon as possible with the tutor or the teacher. But again, because you're five days out on the test, you have room for tutoring sessions, which is like the best part. That's why you want to do extremely hard problems early on so you can get help as soon as possible. I just love talking about like studying 
It's so fun. If this video gets to 15,000 likes, I will film another video explaining even more study tips that I've read about. Okay, so now you are three days out into the test. This is becoming real. You want to continue doing your mock tests, but now up the ante by doing mock tests that have like 8 to 12 questions because that's how much questions at least I usually get on a test for math and science. And if it's for history, for instance, I would suggest rewriting your one page summary or redoing the presentation that you filmed on the, the war or whatever you're studying and by using the strategy you will rarely have to study the night before the test and honestly like I never study the night before the test usually that stuff doesn't even like help it's really about making the investment early on so your future self can benefit and like studying something six hours before the test doesn't usually help especially if you're doing subjects that are very logic based that you actually have to like weave through a problem like rereading something six hours before the test usually won't help I would like to talk about the day of the test because I think this is actually really important surprisingly I mean, you obviously want to make sure that you're going into it with a good sleep, but there's actually specific stuff that I do after a big test, and that is to make sure that I have a hangout with friends scheduled after school. This just creates a positive feedback loop of like, oh, I really worked hard this week, and then right after my test, I hung out with friends. It just refuels my energy for the next test so that I'm not burnt out, and it also creates this upwards momentum to the week while you're studying where you know that, oh, I've released this pressure in my test, and now I'm going to hang out with friends, and I'm just going to get hits of dopamine and serotonin. Now we're going to be talking about like the tactical tips on studying. I would really recommend choosing your peak time of focus when you work best and making sure that you do your hard problems during that time. So I feel like there's constantly this battle between studying and then the homework your other classes are giving to you because that stuff is urgent. Like usually a teacher's not going to assign, oh study for two hours. Studying is like this choice, this discipline that you yourself have to implement. Like I personally focus really well at like 6 a.m. in the morning before school because I haven't been tired down by the school day so I'll spend that time really getting into those hard chemistry textbook problems and then after school I do like my homework so I'm not saying homework's like passive but like I don't need my 100% brain power to do those things so I will just do those things after school and lower the brain load for myself and in terms of focus every single time I study I watch a real-time study with me specifically by Karma Medic he is a medical school youtuber I don't really watch any of his other videos but for some reason I really Really like his real-time study with me. If you had enjoyed this video, you're probably a study tip and productivity nerd. So text me at 617-404-9641 because every Sunday I send out a newsletter of all the new lessons I've been learning as a student and YouTuber in high school and all my best productivity tips. I'll see you guys in the next one.